you guys. <laughs> <laughs> My butt was clenched so hard. <laughs> <laughs> It's what I do when I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> and we and we killed Sunny. <laughs> Hey there, everyone, and welcome to GalaxyCon Live, where we're bringing the convention experience directly to you. I'm your host for today's panel, Mario Bueno. Assassination Classroom is the fourth manga by Yusei Matsui, the mangaka of 2005's Neuro Supernatural Detective, which is completely bonkers. I highly recommend you all check it out, as well as the Elusive Samurai, which is currently running in the pages of Weekly Shonen Jump. The 2015 anime adaptation is still very popular and even had a run on Adult Swim's Toonami Block in August of 2020. And we are very excited to bring you some of the cast members of the English language dub. So without further ado, let's bring people into our virtual classroom for today, starting with the voice of Maya in Borderlands 2 and Irina Jelovic in Assassination Classroom. Please welcome Martha Harms. Welcome, welcome. Hi, thanks so much for having me. No, thank you so much for being here. Also joining us in our virtual classroom, you know them as the voice of Maki in Dragon Ball Super, Laki Olieta in Fairy Tale, and Ryo Nakamura in Assassination Classroom. Please welcome Afia Yu. Hey, what up? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Dig digging the, uh, the, the hair piece there, very, very cool. <laughs> Coming out, coming out to us today in style. I like that. I, I, I feel that. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for also, having me. Also joining us in our virtual classroom, you know them as Nejide Hado in My Hero Academia, Eto in Tokyo Ghoul, and Nagisa Shiota in Assassination Classroom. Please welcome to our virtual classroom, Lindsay Seidel. Welcome, welcome. Hi! Hey, would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> coming, coming prepared. Y'all having the uh, the the on point plushy game today. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you here and also joining us here in our virtual classroom. You know them as the voice of Tatami Nakagame in My Hero Academia, Ruri in Dr. Stone, and Hinano Kurahashi in Assassination Classroom. Please welcome Kristen McGuire. Hello. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm good. I hope you guys are doing well too. We are doing fantastic, and we are very, very uh, excited to continue bringing more classmates into our virtual classroom, because also joining us here today, you know them as the voice of Marco Bolt in Attack on Titan, Ayumu Aikawa in Is This a Zombie, Ken Kaneki in Tokyo Ghoul, and Karma Akabane in Assassination Classroom. Please welcome Austin Tyndall. Hi. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> glad that we are we are both rocking the the blue plaid today. I'm I'm nice. glad we decided oh, man. that. <laughs> I didn't even know that. We look so good. Heck yeah. <laughs> and and your hair's right. looking super fresh. I know you put a lot of work into it for today. Uh looking looking great. Glad to have you here today. <laughs> I'm also wearing pajama pants. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Going full comfy to the classroom. Uh, but no classroom would be complete without the teacher. And we are glad to have the voice of Usopp in One Piece, present Mike in My Hero Academia, Krillin in Dragon Ball Z, and of course, Kuro-sensei in Assassination Classroom. Please welcome Sonny Straight to our virtual classroom. Hello, hey, hello. students. How you doing? <laughs> hey, Teach. Hi. Good to see you guys again. Uh, it's uh, good it's to see you as well, and thank you for joining us over here today at GalaxyCon Live. Now, normally I, I would start with a little bit of a warm-up, but we have some very eager virtual students coming to this virtual classroom. So I, I think we should just jump right into it. Let's see what our fans would like to ask all of you here today. Uh, so let's uh, queue up some of those questions as soon as we are ready. This first one is coming at you from Debbie. What's your most memorable moment in the recording booth? Ooh, that's a good question, Debbie. <laughs> I can go first on this one. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was recording Borderlands 2, and it was the first video game that I'd ever done. And, you know, they ask you to do all these different sounds. So you're doing your lines, but then you also need to give them, like, all these different uh, uh, ways of jumping or running. And I remember particularly, it was the first, first time I'd ever done it, and I was doing running sounds. 
And uh, I won't get any graphic on this uh, chat here, but it sounded running is kind of hard to make it sound just like like running. Mm. Without <laughs> any vocalizations, it kind of starts to yes. sound like things are getting a little sexy, and mm. everyone was dying laughing on the other side of the microphone. It was so funny. Um, I was I turned like bright red, purple, and I will never forget that Aww. moment. And that's when I learned how to run in the microphone. <laughs> Every memory I have, because and I was learning this about memory recently, like like. Hard memories are triggered usually by a spike in adrenaline. It's like it's like a, a protection mechanism. So most of the memories I have from the booth are like moments where I was failing and I was. No. Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember no. those because I directed you on a few shows. We were making a lot of memories. <laughs> <laughs> That's one uh, of the kidding. most memorable shows. I cast I've Austin been more in. than anybody. He was like, uh, like one of my muses. I loved him. Mm, it true. Aww. That's so wholesome. I got some uh, good roles out of it too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dang, I can't believe I'm about to pull out the story at the very beginning of the panel. Uh, Ooh, but on top of voicing Nakamura, I know, right? Uh, I also directed the dub, especially more on the second season. You were um, an amazing director, uh, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> That's very nice of you to say. Dare I say my favorite director ever? I, uh, I mean, you appear to dare to say it. Um, oh, we're getting derailed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where am I? <laughs> ah, yes. A uh, memorable thing. Uh, Rico Fajardo. Now everyone knows the story. Oh, I knew it was to refer to. I was hoping yes, the story would be told. Uh, <laughs> the voice of Itona, the uh, uh, Koro sensei's like little brother with the white hair and stuff. Um, so creepy. Yeah, what a character. Uh, Rico is very different from Itona. Itona is very stoic. Rico's very high energy. <laughs> but one of our first sessions ever, he went in there. We've got a very nice heavy door that closes the booth off from everyone else that no sound gets through. And somehow, some way, to this day, we still don't know how, uh, the little pin in the door that like puts the bolt in broke when he shut it. So he could not reopen the booth. And the oh, way the no. rooms are designed, there's only one way in or out. That's it. Like, you, you only get the one door. And it <laughs> broke, and he couldn't get out. And he was locked in there for about an hour before we managed to slide, like, lockpicking tools underneath the door. And he was able to, like, shimmy himself out with it. But for an hour's worth of time, we were all panicking real hard as to uh what would happen there's a huge thread and i think <coughs> it was great on twitter yeah it was great on twitter i think well, every I three that. months someone Rico. finds the thread uh and it's just pictures we're all taking of him slowly breaking down in the booth <laughs> so oh he, he loved it of course he did <laughs> but i he guess if you're it. really interested in seeing rico fajardo slowly break down and lose most if not all of his clothing there is a Twitter thread <laughs> for it. Are yeah, you sure there's not an OnlyFans from the sound of it? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, How long was, was he in there? there for? Uh, on an entire hour. It got, and then it got he broke, scary on the back end. got down to nudity in an hour. He was yeah. being dramatic. <laughs> Come on, yeah. was, this, was this one of the... That's short restraint, movies? really. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it was what? the room. So, it like, was... there's no way out of there. Like, we were at the point where I was like, if I take a chair and throw it at the glass, will it break? Like, We'll do whatever it takes to get him out. Uh, oh, man. We were also considering seeing if we could like open up the ceiling and drop in from the top. Of, like, <laughs> Mission Impossible, yeah. <laughs> Just like, like an elevator in a cop movie. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Give him a bottle so he can pee in at least. I mean, we couldn't even fit that in at the time. It was really just like slide a metal stick or a ruler underneath the door and hope that that would be enough. Maybe cold to... cuts. If he gets hungry, you could slap yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, like other people, like Pieces I have been like about it, ham. and everyone else in the building saw it. So about 10 minutes in, the door just busts open and there's a crowd of people with cameras like, hey, I heard Rico was locked in here. I got to take a picture. So it's a very well-documented event. Did you start searching for admission? Uh, the chat, uh, Rico hashtag Rico? free Rico. Yes, I did also start <laughs> hashtag free Rico. So I think you can still find that if you look for it. 
it, but there's, <laughs> it's a very well documented event. There's even video of him crawling out once we open the door. Oh uh, all good things, but we, we almost lost an actor that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, well, I'd say after the, hey, there we go. <laughs> if you need to look this up for all of you watching live, if you didn't see it in the chat, uh, we have it right there on your screen. Take a picture of that. We're going to send it to him. Uh, someone is totally going to right this, there. I guarantee you. <laughs> uh, so I know we're still waiting to hear from uh, from Lindsay and Kristen. And I, I don't know if we want to count uh, Sonny's interjection on uh, <laughs> on Austin's uh, story there as a story, um, unless you got a, a fresh one for yourself there, Sonny. You know, but Austin was saying about your adrenaline, you know, causes memories. I, I do remember like the first day recording this show because I showed up and all I was told is that Joel wanted to direct me today. I show up there and I said, so what are we doing? Some more One Piece? He goes, oh, no, we're doing this uh, new show, Assassination Classroom. Went, oh, yeah, I've heard about that. Well, what do you want me to play? And he goes, you're the lead. I went, Oh, okay. And then the adrenaline's going up and I, I'm like, you know, you could have given me a heads up on this. I could have studied this character, but uh, luckily uh, the adrenaline yeah. helped me like focus. And I was like, oh, I think I know who this is. I hope this is who he is because that's what we're going with. <laughs> Commit to the bit. I did um, know ahead of time that you had been cast as him and I did see you. No, everyone knew of me. <laughs> and I was going to say, hey, congrats on And then I went, but what if Joel changes his mind? And so I just yes. sort of like turned around and walked away like, mm. That's good thinking because that happens. But I'm glad that he yeah. didn't because I was super hyped when he told me. Uh, yeah. I I also, oh no, Kristen, you go. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say, if we're keeping it to this show, uh, for me, Assassination Classroom was my first ever named role. Wow. Um, and Sonny and I had actually done a convention like the weekend before, but it was like, this, it was a long drive. It was it was like a four hour drive or something. The Tyler convention? It wasn't Tyler. Oh was no, no, the one in Fairfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we were like, oh, we'll just drive together. And we didn't really know each other super well at the time. So we're like, well, we'll either like Nothing each like other. a road trip to get to know each other. <laughs> yeah. So we'll like each other, we won't. And it actually was really good. And we talked about it a little bit on the way back. And he's like, I just got cast as lead in this new show. That's cool. I was like, that's really cool. Like, I hope I get cast in a show soon, because at the time I was only doing uh background. I had only done background voices, but I'd been working really hard to improve my craft um, so that I could be better. And uh, I got this text that was like, can you come in for like 30 minutes? So I was like, oh, this is probably like more bits and stuff. And so I was like, sure. And I went in and I ran into Joel in the lobby. He's like, oh, good. You're here early. And I'm like, I'm always here early. Um, he's like, I want to talk to you about the show. And I was like, well, that's unusual, but okay. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and he's telling me about this show and what it's about. And, and Joel is kind of known for like giving a lot of like exposition and stuff. You know, he'll, he'll talk for like 10 minutes and he's like, all right, now your character's line is yeah. And you're like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, he's like, nailed it. I'm like, it's the exposition. But, um, so we're sitting there and he's telling me all of this, all the stuff about the story and everything. And I'm like, trying to listen really intently but i'm also thinking i'm like man this is this is a lot even for joel like okay and and then he ends it with like and your character is gonna be blah 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 and i was like oh my god this is my first named role and he's still talking but i'm like having one of those inner <laughs> monologues moments where i'm like don't freak out act normal nod so he knows you're listening and i'm like mm -hmm, all right yes i'm ready to do it and we go in there and, and he shows me Hinano and, and she's got that really great like one of her first scenes is like the I know right and she's like going to stab him and he stops her and he's tutoring her and it's like really iconic and and we do it and he's like that's it that's Hinano and then as I was getting ready to leave I was like thank you so much I'm really I'm really excited and he was like it is exciting you should be excited and I'm like okay well I am and uh and then he said the most beautiful words that any actor can ever hear which is oh yeah I need you to be around for like 22 weeks and I was like yeah 22 weeks of work and uh and i was like that's awesome thank you so much and i was professional the whole time and then i got into my car and i just laughed like maniacally for like five minutes uh, and then i drove home so, i'm glad my... you did it in that order yeah, <laughs> I for real. Drive, <laughs> laughing maniacally. you shouldn't drive i home. laughed maniacally while i was recording and they just cried right, like that was like a requirement <laughs> <for you. laughs> yeah. Lindsay. And Lindsay, what do you well, think about you? Um, so similarly to the others, uh, going into uh, record for my first session, first National Nation Classroom, I had 
no idea what character I would be playing or if I would even be playing a character rather than just be a, back, a background voice. Um, so I had no information. I did know it was for a show called Assassination Classroom. So I looked it up ahead of time. And I've talked about this before um, that I, uh, when I looked at like uh, the main characters in the show, I was like, oh gosh, well, I just, I hope that he didn't cast me as Nagisa. <laughs> What? <laughs> I know. Well, well but the reason why is because I was terrified of messing it up. Um, and so I was like, well, as long as like I'm anyone <laughs> except Nagisa, like it'll be fine. Um, because I at that point was not super comfortable doing a boy voice. I'd done it before for like small roles here and there, but um, I did not, it was not something I felt like super comfortable with yet. And so that's why I was like, I hope that's not what he casts me as. Cause I was terrified that I would ruin it and everyone would hate it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you know how this story goes. I walked <laughs> into the booth and Joel was there and he was like, you're going to be playing Nagi son. I was like, no way. <laughs> 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 um, and so I was super, super nervous and terrified. And, you know, he made me even more nervous. He didn't mean to do so, but he did because he was telling me like how popular um, this show was going to be and that like there's already all this hype about it in Japan. And I was like, that's great. <laughs> Normally, that's like something that's like we actors get very excited about. But I was like, oh, no, like the pressure's on that. I really got to, you know, do a good job. And um, I had already convinced myself that um, I was not cut out for the role and that everyone was going to hate the voice that I was going to give. But um, luckily, Joel is a uh, wonderful director to work with. And he, um, you know, from the start was like, extremely encouraging and he was you know we were, he was like you know let's watch a little bit in in the japanese and we can listen to what he sounds like in the japanese and we'll go from there and he's like and i'll guide you on you know what i want he's like you know i'm i'm thinking that maybe we want to make him sound a little more masculine than the voice actor made him sound in japanese um and so we played around with the voice for a little bit just on the first line until we settled on something that um, uh, Joel felt like would be best, and 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 thus the voice was born. And now, of course, I am like so grateful that he did cast me in that role because to date, it is one of my absolute favorite roles that I've ever gotten to voice. Um, I love, love, love Nagisa. He is so near and dear to my heart, and yeah, such a great character. And it's great because now because I got to spend so long doing that voice. Now I can, you know, pull the boy voice out. No problem. It's right there in my pocket. Um, I feel very comfortable doing it now, thanks to that role. So, yeah. And you do yeah, put I, a lot of heart into that role too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, I did. I did put a lot of heart into that. <laughs> and you also have a very unique sound for a, a boy voice. When women do boys voices, a lot of times it's kind of generic, but yours is like, very distinct. It stands out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, did we did we see some, some animal action going on over there in, in Austin's window? <laughs> no, I'm certainly not uh, trying to stoke the, uh, the the fires of the chat to make the less. Later. I had to put my dog back too because she she was causing too much trouble in my life. Aww. Okay. My dog is we'll definitely uh, get through some more questions and see if maybe uh, the, the 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 pets are. Feeling uh feeling like being on camera today, and uh, maybe find some to drugs next or something. Question: uh, This one is from Ava Lee. <clears throat> if you weren't a voice actor, what career would you have chosen? I'll start with that one. Uh, comic book artist, because that's what I do now too. So that's mm -hmm. my fallback position. <laughs> Although I, I love teaching too. I, I've been teaching for the past, gosh, five years now, and I, I love teaching. It's this is my favorite job to do right now. Like you were meant to be very appropriate. <laughs> Weirdly, I started teaching the same. When was when did we start recording this? Because it was the same week we started recording this. It was the yeah. same week. 
It was the same week of your very, very first class because I was there in. and I was late because of my session at the studio. <laughs> and then you outed me to everyone in the class. Yeah, wasn't that weird though? Yeah, because you were playing my student and I was teaching, and then all of a sudden we had to go to our real life where you were a student and I was a teacher. It was. Excellent. And you were my favorite weird. student there too. Cool too. Aww. Well, that's, that's, cute. that's very wholesome and appropriate. <laughs> that's good. That's all we do, man. <laughs> wholesome and appropriate, especially Austin. So appropriate is going to be on my tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, right. uh, appropriate. Awesome. <laughs> appropriate. Adequate, appropriate. Acceptable. Three A's. <laughs> if I wasn't a voice actor, I would probably be waiting tables and doing open mic and regional theater. Open I did that mic too. singing, open mic comedy. That is a very good question and a very uh, important distinction. <laughs> I, would be do I would be doing sketch comedy. <laughs> yeah. At a uh, at you know hyenas off of Mockingbird when I was lucky, and I'd probably be working the door. The laugh shack. <laughs> I mean, I come see your show. I would too. Aww. So I'd see you. Me too. <laughs> No. Oh, you guys are so supportive. This is a yeah. <laughs> All right, so everyone check out Austin's show <laughs> yeah. Friday. When, when do you guys go? <laughs> actually, just decided he's gonna be having. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Surprise! Like, you're you're gonna be going up next. You're gonna be a star, kid. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you do a, a ton of jobs. I think, uh, especially if you're an actor. Um, and I lived in Dallas for so long. I'm in New York City now, but uh, I. I was well, hello, neighbor. <laughs> oh, hey, neighbor. Where are you? Uh, over in Bushwick in Brooklyn. I'm in Williamsburg. Hey, Woo! that's for that's well, there you pretty go. Close. We're pretty close to each other. Um, yeah, no, but I waited tables. Uh, I worked at a bar for a while. Um, I used to babysit kids for like over a decade. Um, I've taught children's classes, like children's gym classes and music classes. I've I've done like everything under the sun. I've been a lifeguard. I've worked at a library. I've uh you just uh, you just make money until you find the thing that you get good enough at, I think. And I'm still to this day I do like on camera commercials here in New York and I'm just getting into TV and film. So there's like you just do what you got to do, <clears throat> I think. But no, I wouldn't have like picked to be a doctor or anything. Like <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be a professional basketball player. Oh, yeah. Oh, me too. Nice. I'd come see all your games. <laughs> Go dunk on some pools. We'll support you whatever you do, Austin. Because you're appropriate. Uh, I want to be a children's book illustrator and author. I actually seriously pursued it for a long time, especially when my kids were smaller. And uh, I, I like researched it and submitted to agencies. And I wrote a, I wrote and illustrated a book. You can actually buy it on Amazon. It's called I Wish I Were Blue with gold dots too. It's about a bear who wishes he could change his color. Um, but that never really took off. So, but I guess if I weren't voice acting, maybe I, maybe I would have kept pursuing it. I don't know. Chris and I connected at a convention before she was a voice actor because she was doing her own comic books. And I was a self-publisher as well, so we connected like right away. Yeah, we traded comic books. I mm -hmm. gave him my Fat Girl comic, and he gave me um, Goat, the yeah. origin of Goat. I still have it. That's right. Yeah, that's how we met. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cartoonist. You can it for free right now on Kindle Unlimited on Amazon. Hey, there we go. My, my <laughs> Every every four months, I get a sweet, sweet royalty check for like 56 cents. It's pretty awesome. Whoa, that's pretty good. Hey, girl. I mean, hey, that's not zero. Amazon.com. I wish I were blue. Is that is it self-published too? <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't yeah. get it published like for, for, for real. So I was like, all right, well, I'll just publish I it. have a self-published project in mind. I'm, I'm doing ElfQuest for Dark Horse right now. But we will finish that run probably by August, I think, maybe September. Or so, but after that, I've got. It. I want to go back into self-publishing. I, I love yeah, doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no rules. Athia also is a self-publisher <laughs> oh, and a cartoonist and a brilliant cartoonist too. 
Uh, I, I am a writer, artist. Oh, I, I hate that thing where you're like, well, I do three things. I'm like a writer and an artist <laughs> as well as a Everything is I can also do a thing. Um, a but magician. No, I, do, <laughs> I do write a comic as well as do other art. Um, I've been doing a lot of artwork recently, especially, and streaming especially silly art games. So... Uh, mostly art. I think I'd probably throw myself into it a little more with my comic and the novel that I'm working on and things like that. Like, it's weird to say what would you be doing otherwise, because I'm literally already doing it right now. Um, we need to go back to our drama club. Yeah. I drama. That was the name of our club. You're welcome. <laughs> we, had like, we had like two meetings. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful. But if I were doing none of the things I am doing now, I actually am a programmer, and so that's like a job. So probably that. But I'm I like the art, I like the writing, so that's fun. Rock and roll. Uh, uh, I guess. Uh, oh wait, we are having something. Wait, hey, uh, there you are on your screen if you want to see the cover. The Christians. Uh, oh, how cute is that? Book. I wish I were blue. <laughs> there that's you go. Awesome. Maybe I shortened the title <laughs> after all. <laughs> so, there you go, people. You it exists, that? and uh, again, if you if, if you have that from your you know, sweet sweet Kindle Unlimited, go and go and check it out. You'll you'll be helping mm -hmm. out uh, one of your one of your favorite voice actors. One point six six in four right months. <laughs> Full price for it, but I want a copy. I don't have any physical copies. What? I might yeah. have the actual PDF. original. <laughs> I think I do have all the original paintings because it's all hand painted. It's all watercolor. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I've got oh, those. Wow. You want those, Sonny? I'll give them. To I want to check them out. Yeah. <laughs> Come see me before you move. Okay, it's got two weeks. All right. <laughs> Time, <laughs> time's timer. a ticking. Uh, and I guess uh, let's let's wrap up with uh, Lindsay before we move on to our next question. Yes. So I am. Um, yeah. Since the the question was specifically if you weren't a voice actor, I mean the easy answer is you know. Like everyone else, voice acting is not the only thing I do. I do um, acting for the camera on well as well. So you know, acting for film commercials. Um, that's well, that's mostly the on camera work we get here in Dallas. But um, you know, uh, back uh, when I was younger and uh, Texas had more tax incentives for film work, I got to do cooler stuff. Like back when I was in high school and college. Um, you know, got to guest star on uh, some TV shows and be in some um, films. And uh, yeah, so if I wasn't doing any voice acting, then I think I would still be doing um, acting for the camera. But if the question is more like, you know, what would you be doing if you weren't an actor? Um, I So in college, I actually, I majored in marketing and psychology because I, I've been acting professionally since I was about 10 years old. So, you know, I've been taking acting classes and doing that for many years. And so when I went to college, I decided I want to study, wanted to study something different. And um, right out of college, I actually got a job working for JCPenney Corporate as a business analyst <laughs> because um, I was not convinced that I would be able to make a living doing acting full time because up to that point, I'd just done it like as a, you know, after school job kind of thing. We were and, in the headquarters. Yeah. So I wasn't convinced. Yes? That, no, were you in the, the big headquarter building? Yeah, I was in the big headquarter building. Huge. Just this it's massive huge. complex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's where I worked for three and a half weeks and then I quit because <laughs> I very quickly realized that I was I was in the wrong place <laughs> and too I many felt, cubicles what's that were there too many cubicles yeah it was extremely suffocating yeah. the yeah. the corporate culture I very quickly learned was not not for me and um because I had um, had the sweet, sweet taste of being paid before to do something that I love doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted nothing to do with um, being paid to crunch numbers all day and have people act like it's like really important when like it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I quit and was like, okay, you know what? 
I, I'm going to try to give the acting thing a go full time and let's see if I can make enough money to feed myself. <laughs> I, I'd say it worked out pretty well in the end. <laughs> you made the right choice. Um, very grateful. So, yeah. And so I uh, gave that a go and I haven't looked back since and I have been able to make it work, which has been great. But yeah, I, because I hated that corporate job so much, I honestly, if I wasn't doing acting, like I have no idea what I'm really doing. I have no idea. I mean, I have a, deg a, you know, a marketing and psychology degree that I can fall back on if I need to. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I guess I'd be, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like maybe I, I could um, get like a teaching certificate or something and be like um, a teacher for young kids. I like working with uh, young kids a lot. Kids are lots of fun. So maybe something like that. But yeah. You can uh, get them started with Kristen's book. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could never, ever, ever be an art teacher because I have zero talent when it comes to the visual arts, <laughs> much to my dismay. But, you know, I think you need to go to drama club. Yay. Ah, there it is. I'll show you our <laughs> tricks. Sounds, no, yeah. it terrifies me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some more questions, y'all. This one is coming from Christy. What other fandom do you think would be awesome to cross over with Assassination Classroom? These questions always <laughs> amuse me so much. <laughs> I, I, I love to hear the answers that, that come out of these. So thank you, Christy. <laughs> I don't know if I understand the question. How do you... uh, so, for example, another uh, you know property or fandom or something. What would you want to see crossover? other than anime fandom? Uh, anime, comic book, whatever, uh, like whatever your heart desires. Got something. Like like Avengers Assassination Classroom, like where Koro joins the Avengers. <laughs> sure, okay. I think that's, that's a great example. The Avengers, yeah. This might be a cheap answer. Go for it. But a My Hero OVA where they are challenged, Class 1A is challenged uh, by- uh, I was thinking that, I was thinking uh, like that. Yeah. Non-quirk trained assassins going after the quirk kids. Oh, yeah. 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 I think that's good. Yeah. Because you can't put them in the Dragon Ball Z world because Koro Sensei wouldn't stand a chance against it. I mean, I think even Krillin could take him. But <laughs> My Hero, Ooh, that's yeah. That's a spicy take right there. I, I just don't think, because mean, Krillin can move definitely Krillin's faster than Mach 20. Krillin. <laughs> but Krillin can't sing as well as Koro, so there's, there's oh, that. So maybe they could have a sing-off or something. I was going to say, a karaoke <laughs> contest. Yeah, <laughs> done. And he lacks Koro Sensei's uh, raw uh, uh, masculine charisma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you like tentacle stuff, don't you? I don't mind that. Wholesome, wholesome, <laughs> and appropriate. This is the appropriate kind. Yeah, oh exactly. Uh, there the actually is. Uh, it's the line, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> we're still good. We're still good. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> uh, so the show I directed after Assassination Classroom was The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. And I discovered later that both manga ka are from the same hometown and met each other and went, we're from the same hometown, we should do a thing. And so there actually is a crossover, one a single manga chapter crossover of The Disastrous Life of Psyche K and Assassination Class. Wait, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, where, because the main like character that, that Psyche cool. really loves sweets and Koro Sensei also loves confectionery. Ooh. So it was Psyche versus Koro Sensei trying to get like the last red bean bun. Um, and I <laughs> would love, love, love to have that animated and be able to direct the dub for that because I did the two shows already. That was amazing. Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> perfect too. Japan. Uh, but it was that so show funny. was so funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it was very very funny. And in fact, there's a little bit of overlap between Psyche K and then we did the Assassination Classroom spin-off Koto Sensei Quest. Mm -hmm. Uh so I think if you're watching like the back end of Psyche K, you'll actually hear the cast of Assassination Classroom as all the bits in the crowd. Cause I'm like, hey, we're doing two shows at once. Come over here and help me. Uh, so there, fun to be. Disastrous Life of Psyche K recently. And they mm -hmm. loved it. Hey, it's very funny. I mean, both of the shows are funny in really different ways. Like Assassination Classroom hits all the weird notes. And Psyche K is just so hyperactive, but the the combination, the the crossover manga chapter they did was just excellent in both ways, and I really, really want to do it. Give us an OVA. Please. Give us an OVA. <laughs> what, is, what is the title of that crossover manga? 
Oh, I don't remember, but I bet if you look for it, like it was just the fight for maybe Iru Manju because they're from the town Iruma and they're fighting over a Manju. So oh. it's about Iru Manju. Ha <laughs> ha I get it. They got jokes. <laughs> I'm writing it down. Okay. <laughs> Uh, That's a fun okay, question. So, what about uh, Martha, uh, Lindsay, or Kristen? What do you What do you guys got? Oh, I already said mine. Mine was Avengers. Ah, okay. Avengers so that was like a legit. Sorry, I thought that was like a sampler. <laughs> my my B, my B. <laughs> thinking my hero, but um, uh, what was I thinking? I had a couple others in my head. I mean, it's so lame, but like it would be kind of fun if you like. They show up in Harry Potter and they got like, <laughs> suddenly, like the hoods come off and it's the kids from As Glass. Um, oh, my octopus teacher. Hello. <laughs> I want to be swimming. <laughs> and then suddenly. No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Such a good documentary. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Put yeah, it in yeah. the back. Um, make, a, make a second, a two parter. That's. <laughs> Those are my ideas. <laughs> It's great. I remember when I saw that on Netflix too, I was like, that's an anime title if I've ever seen one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Well, also an amazing documentary. Yeah, I just watched that this weekend. It was really good. Emily, oh, good. Emily Neves told me about it. She's been begging me to watch it. The first time she mentioned it, I was like, <laughs> no, it probably isn't. I haven't yeah. seen it yet either, but it's, it's worth seeing. Oh, it's the really, footage you get really good. good. It's amazing. This guy spent so much time with this octopus, and he gets integral moments in this octopus's life. They're very smart. They yeah, are. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite shot were when it just like climbed on top of him and was just hanging out and like playing with him. <coughs> putting his, like, her Aren't they aliens face. or something? I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. They seem like they are. And then really on their home planet, they live for a long time. But here, they only live for like five years. They have just enough time to mate and die. <laughs> Something about the, the chemicals in the air, maybe? or in the she moves to Connecticut? Is the water, water, water. Is the, yeah. <laughs> the, and they need to move to Connecticut. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then that no, crush, I dated a guy from The seals <laughs> in Connecticut live for 300 years. It's amazing. That's a, that's a so fact. the octopus should learn from the a seals. scientific fact. Look it is a scientific fact, not just something I just pulled out of my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate. Lindsay, what would your crossover be? Um, I have come up with nothing original past what anyone else has said. Um, but I am if I'm, I'm if I'm gonna like put my vote in for one of the ones that was mentioned, um, I would vote for disastrous life of Psyche K. I think that that would be so funny. Actually, Give us an OVA. Magic, school bus, <laughs> magic school bus crossover would be really cool. Ooh, that's a cool right? idea. Yeah. Wait, everybody is so much more creative than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you made me think of it like just now when you were talking, it made me think of it. So technically I owe this. So you get kind of half credit. Wait, for that. So there actually, yeah, like I definitely get some credit. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're the muse. That, that, that counts. <laughs> I'm going to give you a passing grade on that one. We need a live action <laughs> magic so. school bus movie so bad. Live action magic school bus. Yeah. Why I love the magic school bus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> but it gets really dark. What about like the gritty, gritty gritty yellow magic magic submarine magic. with all the cast? They would fit in there really oh. well, I think. Yeah. Oh, That's I don't know. Interesting one. Yeah. I like to be under the sea. <laughs> in <laughs> <laughs> We're I said Coral pulse, could honey. sing better, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're good. I think we're good. <laughs> we're, we're not we're not Ooh. under the uh, the, the scrutiny uh, unlike other platforms, shall we say? <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we definitely have time for at least one, maybe two more. Let's see how we do. What do we have next from our wonderful GalaxyCon Live fans? This one is from Katrina. What's one piece of advice you would give to your character? Oh. Definitely looking in Lindsay's direction, considering <laughs> her pedigree. <laughs> hmm. That's been working in this question. too long. I, heard, I was going to say seek piece? therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was that was my first thought, um, especially given like Nagisa's family life. <laughs> yeah, you would benefit from therapy. Mm -hmm. Big yeah. time. So would Irina. 
I think I would tell Cora Sensei, you know, maybe maybe another subject, you know, <laughs> besides assassination for kids. <laughs> yeah. There are other ways to build confidence and self esteem, I think, than just, you know, mm. teaching people how to kill people stealthily. What's yeah. that Edward James Almost movie where he's a teacher that teaches calculus to like underprivileged inner city Stand youth? And but is it like lethal yeah. calculus? Stand and deliver. <laughs> Stand and deliver, but you're an octopus now. Lethal calculus. I love that. <laughs> it almost killed me. <laughs> uh, calc. Yeah. Calc. Oh, oh what's that? going on the screen. That was announced <laughs> almost a year ago. Well, wow. oh, okay. thanks. I go. would tell Irina to learn to laugh at herself. Just, mm -hmm. just that's fair. I mean, work like on that. your sense of humor. And just, yeah. Oh, oh. oh. baby. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. okay, this is good. Okay, okay. What's his name? <laughs> Her name? Ajax. Ajax. Yes. Hey, Ajax, boo boo. Ajax is a babe. Oh, oh, look, look, Corgi, yeah? That is a beautiful I Corgi. Corgi. I hope you all know I have been taking pictures of your pets. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm at like at good. least 50 cat pictures oh, at this point. Oh my point God, look at that photo. Oh. Uh, <laughs> doubt, she like melted off the couch and oh, no. let her out. Like she was, she was like, I'm too big. And she just like kind of slowly slid off. So I let her out of the room. So. In such a mood though. <laughs> um, I have no I pets. Can... Am I, I'm the only one. I don't have. That's why I'm taking pictures of everyone else's. <laughs> I'm I don't know, have any yeah, I'm good advice for Hina now, except maybe date in your own age group. That's a pretty sound advice, <laughs> I would say. I don't, I don't have a lot of good advice. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Afia, did you get a picture of my pet coyote? Oh, hey. here we go. Picture there time. Go. There it is. Got <laughs> it. <laughs> Give him a head scratch, Sonny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he likes that. No, <laughs> I saw uh, coyotes in the Funimation parking lot one night when I was directing. They're just oh, scary. Wow. Yeah, that's cute. There's nothing but like, parking lot for miles. Where did he come from? There's trees and stuff around. There were two of them. They're trees. Were, probably a, probably trees? a spirit animal made manifest. There's like two trees. <laughs> no, no, there were two coyotes. Oh, there one for each like, tree. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the spirit of the trees made manifest. <laughs> no, I think back what I said earlier. I don't miss any. Wow. You do too. Wait, you miss me so crap. much. <laughs> Let's move on to the next know? question. There is yeah. a small I'm town. Pat you on the head. <laughs> There's a small town in like South Texas that I drove through called No Trees. Oh, God. <laughs> Did it live up to its name? <laughs> Had any trees? We need to know. Were there no I trees? There was even like a, a, a tiny little sapling. As I was driving through, but I just thought that was like great. What a great name! No trees. We don't have any, and we don't want any. Don't bring us any. Here are no, no trees. trees. We try to we, plant a tree. HOA it just obstructs the view. Welcome to no Let's trees. Get rid of those trees. <laughs> Coming, coming, uh, coming for the assassination classroom talk. Walk out with all these interesting tidbits. <laughs> let me exactly. tell you. Uh, so I we mean, are just about oxygen. I'd move up north. So. Yeah, trees mm -hmm. get that get that oh. sweet sweet uh eternal air <laughs> becoming mm -hmm. a mortal possibly a highlander I, I i don't know <gasps> so we'll we'll take one more quick question and then we will wrap it up over here before we take that last question just a reminder there is still a little bit more time to get your <laughs> holy crap there, there it is hey there we go and no, no, we are we are i think it's tree. pronounced no tree. Tree. i see a tree yeah, that's, a that's just a bush. That's, that's just a real a big, big bush. bush. <laughs> Bushes are okay. Trees are the enemy. <laughs> got grass. We got bushes. Guy who rolls in like once got leaves <laughs> down no in trees. No trees. <laughs> so no trees. our our final no question trees. before we start to bring this very delightful chat to a close. I'm so sad about this. Seriously, <laughs> y'all, this has been just a blast. <laughs> uh, so everybody. this is from McKaylee. Oh. What was the hardest line you had to record? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if this counts, but the, this is not even just in assassination classroom. This is just period that like, the hardest thing I've ever had to record. Totally fine. <laughs> and it was in assassination classroom was when I had to sing happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, sing it for us. I do remember. No. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely don't have the right to that. To begin with. Um, and do not feel comfortable singing anyway. And then, then ask me to sing in Nagisa's voice. You guys. <laughs> 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 My butt was clenched so hard. <laughs> it was it was an extreme. That's a good. That's a good way to sing. Funny. You sing from the butt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my my wife says I do it too much. You really though, get so, the full. You know. We, the we, full we sound. call this the Ace Ventura method. <laughs> it's what I do when I'm stressed. <laughs> and we and we killed Sonny. <laughs> oh no! We lost. Oh no! Oh no! If only I know what you sing you from, from your butt. butt. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm going to teach him in the next class. That's for the advanced students. Because <laughs> Lindsay is a pro, so, you know, like, yeah. we introduce that in the basic I class. I kind of, like, invented the method. So. <laughs> that's what the – I never understood the method. Like, but now it's clear. That's what your quirk could be. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Or if you ever get the superpower question, which we often get, what would your superpower be? I was just about to say, you're ready for, for you know, uh, uh, the next My Hero Academia panel. <laughs> <Gun. Yeah. laughs> ready to go. What would your superhero name be if that was your quirk? Oh. But buttress. Eight. Buttress? That's Wait, pretty good. The buttress. Seriously, the buttress. you guys? You didn't mean to come up with the assassin? Assassin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> buttress, the assassin. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are good yeah. to go. <laughs> We're just in time because we almost got unwholesome. Yeah, right, almost. Uh, what about you know, um, hardest hardest lines, whether it be from oh, uh, yeah. fascination classroom or just uh, a, a particularly memorable uh, line in in your voiceover career? I had well, a, say, go ahead. I had a really tough time on Kami Sama Kiss. I played this little bunny that was like holding sake and it had to have like a really high pitched voice. But the line was like, it's from Lord Okuni Nushi, you must drink. But when I saw Okuni Nushi, like you have to imagine like it was this really <laughs> Japanese name and like it's in the middle of the sentence. And anytime something's in the middle of the sentence like that and it's like a foreign word, like my mind is like, you can't say that. Like you will never be able to say that to picture. And uh, and it took me like ten tries, and I couldn't say it, but it had to be like it's from Little Kuninushi, You must drink, and but I couldn't do it, and I like I was so mad, and I was like I'm sorry, Jerry, I'm a failure, and he's like I can't say murderer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like it's okay, one. we all have our things, and now I could say it all day long, but if I had to say it for many again, I. I probably couldn't. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that was I have mine. to play an announcer for Jerry, and I have to do like all these uh, names that I can't. I'm really bad at pronouncing Japanese names, but you know what I do? I sing the word, and I can remember it. Ah. I don't even have to use my butt. I just sing it. <laughs> and I remember it. Well, next time, try it with your butt. <laughs> well, this is what I was going to say because my hardest thing is anything that Usopp does. Because every mm -hmm. session for Usopp in One Piece, he does at least two to three blood curdling screams. Mm -hmm. But I, I usually do it from the back of my throat, and I'm going to come from the butt. I just <laughs> really. Blood screams. That's, that's the, yeah. the sport I need. Don't the hold the tension in, in, in your throat. Thank you, Liz. In your butt. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's really going to bring something new to the character. I'm excited to hear And it. to the booth, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Blessed. I can't I pity the fool that we after me. But I do I do a lot of like commercial voiceover and and um and like industrial stuff too and for some reason everybody there are words that you get caught up on, right? Like so that person's was murderer. Um I have there's some, someone I know can't say banana when they read it off the page. They just keep saying banana. And, 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 it's and, hard to know when to for stop. For me, I can't say <laughs> community, like communities. And everyone's writing copy now that has the words oh, businesses community. and communities in it. We like communities. Are you I'm supposed to say the T now, in community? community? When I read it, I'm like communi community. <clears throat> Commun like I can't get immune. Sync. Community. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's, from your butt. Are but different from your butt. From my butt. From yeah. my butt. Sing comedy. comedy. <laughs> I just have to let go. Hold it. <laughs> just let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> like, no. Gears turning over in uh, Austin and Afia's oh, <laughs> eyes there. So what? Uh, what about you guys? Uh, nothing's uh. ever been hard for me once. <laughs> She's I believe that. On. I actually believe Never that. Never has a problem. It's a privileged life. Uh, I know, isn't it great? Uh, I would say probably most of the singing that we've ever had to do, kind of like Lindsay. Um, Wait, but you're like actually a good singer, though. Well, I do sing, but we dub a lot of songs, and sometimes we don't have a lot of time. So there was once where I went in and we just did a song I had never heard before. And they would just play it one line at a time. And I would do that one line. Mm -hmm. And then they would play the next line. And I did that one. And, you know, I'm sweating because I don't know what's going to come next. And I don't know if this is going to stay in my range or not. But I sure did say I could sing. So I better keep that promise now. <laughs> um, or change the resume. Yeah, I know, right? Ah, oh, quick, I got to hang on. Uh, I didn't say that anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so probably that. It's also hard when it's like to actual flaps and stuff too. Like yeah. It's mm -hmm. God, yeah. It's actual, just singing by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. One of the most difficult things I had to do was a character for the animation for Tales of Zestiria named Lunare. And that was a pain in the booty um, just because of the weird sounds that had to be made early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, but also specifically for Assassination Classroom, the, like, and Afia was directing me when we kind of figured out the voice too. I, I actually, we actually recorded a couple, we recorded, we recorded like the first two episodes before we kind of figured out what that voice should sound like. And then we went back and re-recorded it. I think that was straight to DVD. Uh, it was broadcast, but we had a four week turnaround time. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's right. only one week now. <laughs> yeah. uh, and thank god for that four week turnaround because uh, it, it was completely different and a million times better once uh we figured out what it was um but uh the, you know that the the whole karma thing is kind of like this annoying little back of the throat like hey i'm a sarcastic little guy and I'm I'm not sweating. You're mad. I'm not mad. That's what it's all about. Um, and I I didn't really ever know how to scream or be vulnerable. So there are moments where karma has to make a bunch of noise, and I'm like, I I don't know. I'm just I just it's just me again. <laughs> that is hard though, because so sometimes you base a character around a certain sound or something and then you have to scream in it all of a sudden and it's like how does this guy scream yeah you know yeah. i always say like you really find your character when you know how they laugh i don't Ooh, does okay. your character ever laugh karma I don't... <laughs> yeah there it is there it is dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh man <laughs> free there. lessons from koro <laughs> sensei <laughs> there we go very, very appropriate way to round out this uh very wonderful and appropriate panel appropriate. <laughs> but no, for real. thank you so much to everybody uh as always stay happy stay healthy stay informed and we'll see you again soon at galaxy con live take care y'all